Hey y'all, it's Jennifer. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am coming to you with what I'm hoping will be a weekly reading vlog. Uh, so we are in a bit of a different location today just because I was feeling inspired to vlog. It's actually Sunday night. Uh, it's Sunday night the 14th of November uh, and officially I have read absolutely nothing in the month of November. I have read nothing in total for nonfiction November. I have read nothing in total that's just a fiction book. I've read nothing in total. Uh, so the last time I finished anything was literally Halloween. So literally two weeks ago. This is very unusual for me. I don't want to say that I'm in a reading slump because I don't necessarily think that's what it is. Uh, I just think my attention has been on other things. But I was sitting down watching some booktube after dinner tonight and I got kind of inspired to start a reading vlog. So I thought to myself, hey, I'm gonna film a little something before I go to bed and hopefully that makes me feel accountable and hopefully it inspires me to actually read something. So please just uh, forgive the lighting in this one because I do only have on my overhead light and normally I would come to you semi-dressed, but it's very cold. I'm in my Squid Game hoodie. I'm just feeling good right now. And so hopefully this is a sign that maybe my mood is improving. Maybe I really wanna read something. I should be really focusing on a book that I am conducting a read along of this month, Herodotus's The Histories. I am telling you, I am in the first book, so essentially the first chapter of that. And I have read the same sentence no exaggeration, it has to be 15 times now, that I have been stuck on that book, that I have been stuck reading that sentence and reading that paragraph. And I'm honestly to the point, this is confessional time, I just think I need to put it down and I hate to let down people like that, but y'all can continue on with the read along without me. But clearly I am struggling with it and I think clearly I'm just struggling with reading. I don't know that it has anything to do with Herodotus, but I don't really like his writing style anyway. It might be the translation I have, but I'll confess to you that I've been bored with it. But again, nonfiction, it's been hard for me to kind of focus. And so I have set down the histories for the time being, and I'm hoping here in the latter half of the month, I can come back into it and plow through it. I might have to get an audiobook, but that's not a hardship. But when I have been thinking about reading, I've wanted to read in the past couple of days anyway, and the only book that I have wanted to read has been a Dostoevsky. And it's strange to say because I've only read one Dostoevsky to completion, but he is on my brain at least 50% of the time when I'm thinking about the next book that I wanna pick up. And so I gave in uh, and I have started Crime and Punishment and I'm only on the second chapter. So I'm literally five pages in. So this is about a character who murders someone and then feels some immense guilt wrapped around it. But something that I didn't know going into this is that it has a lot to do with poverty and capitalism uh, and uh, the poverty line dealing with money and how you handle money and how you get into situations maybe. Is Raskolnikov the main character in this situation because of himself or is it a wider issue like system wide? And I think that's really fascinating. I know I'm gonna enjoy this. Uh, I read The Idiot earlier this year, five stars, loved it. So I just have a good feeling about this one. The funny thing is, I am always apparently reading a Dostoevsky on the heels of watching something that was just like it or was dealing with similar themes. So at the start of the year, I was reading The Brothers Karamazov and I put that down essentially because I decided I wanted that to be my last Dostoevsky because it is so big and it rates for many people as their favorite. And I just wasn't giving it the attention that it deserved. So I put it down, but I started reading it immediately after watching the last season of Vikings. And it's so wild how well the brothers Karamazov went in conversation with the last season of Vikings, with Vikings in general, like dealing with a group of sons and a father that they had a very conflicted relationship with. I saw every single one of the characters in that book as a son of Ragnar. Uh, so it was just really exciting. And actually, I think that'll still be in my head when I pick it up the next time. The Idiot, I read immediately after watching Netflix's Ragnarok. 
which is a, uh, a Norwegian show where the Norse gods are basically being reincarnated in teenagers or teenagers are being given the powers of the Norse gods. And the main character is imbued with the power of Thor and he is so Prince Mishkin, who is the main character of The Idiot. It's just insane. It was just really funny to have immediately read that book because the themes were there. Uh, with the brothers Karamazov, it was kind of a theme of sons, brothers, their relationship with their father being conflicted, being conflicted with each other, and their relationships to each other being very complicated, which is so Vikings, the later seasons of Vikings. Uh, and The Idiot is very much about a good character, a good guy who is constantly being criticized and being questioned for being good. And you wonder throughout the entire book, is he gonna have to harden up? And that's essentially what Ragnarok is. The main character, Magna, is such a good person. He's such a kind and giving person. And you worry throughout the show, is he ever gonna lose that? So it's just kind of interesting that in both of those situations, two pieces of art were kind of having a conversation to me. The same thing is happening here with Crime and Punishment. So I am just off the heels of watching Squid Game and I'm actually gonna blame Squid Game for some of my reading mood because it was so good that I now am only interested in stories like it or in just re-watching it. It's rare, very rare to get invested in a story the way that I got invested in Squid Game this year. Uh, I really was wondering about my relationship to television and to visual media actually because I haven't felt passionately about anything that I've watched except for maybe Ragnarok this year. But Squid Game proved me wrong. So Squid Game is about essentially a death game, a survival game, and all of the characters are people who are down on their luck. They are on the poverty line. And so they go into this game playing for money. Uh, and it's so, it's so fascinating because it deals exactly with these themes of poverty. Is this a situation you brought on yourself? Is this a wider situation in terms of system or government? And how do you as a person react to this situation? Is there a point where you lose your humanity because you need that money? Uh, and so that's definitely what I think Crime and Punishment is playing with. The main character so far for me, Raskalnikov, uh, he reminds me of Cho Song Wu in Squid Game, who was one of my favorite characters because I just thought he was fascinating. He was also really handsome, just to be shallow, but he was incredibly handsome. So it's interesting Dostoyevsky is a very current writer for me because every time I've read him, I am fresh off the heels of some other media that clearly is talking about the same issues that he was talking about. And I often wonder if this has to do with the fact that Dostoyevsky was kind of of a lower class. He was maybe middle class, maybe, and a lot of other Russian writers were upper class, like uh, Tolstoy, I believe, was. And so maybe they, as writers, are not dealing with issues that are so present, but Dostoyevsky was dealing with issues that are still massive issues to us today. So I'm fascinated to get into this and I'm hoping that I can finally read something, finally finish something, and hopefully this vlog will hold me accountable. Maybe I will read some tomorrow and update you then. So just a quick update on Crime and Punishment. It is Monday, so it's the next day. <laughs> I'm on page 50 of Crime and Punishment, so I feel like that's really good. I do feel as though I am actively reading it slower than I would read most other things, if that makes sense. But I'm really enjoying it. I have to say, it has really completely captured me. I am so excited about it. Uh, and I'm really just thrilled to be reading something that kind of has my attention. Because even though I'm not reading it currently, it's been on my mind since I sat it down. So that's a good sign for me. Hopefully it means I'm getting back in the reading spirit and maybe this will really jolt me out of my slump if that's what I'm in. I get the sense though that since I'm reading it so slowly already, it's gonna be something that I'm gonna take my time with. I don't care. If it takes me six months to read it, so be it. I'm really enjoying it right now. And I just think the issues and the themes at play here are so fascinating. Uh, so hopefully I will update you again when I'm further into it. I don't know what the rest of the week looks like, but sad to say I'm standing in front of my bookshelf. I just finished filming my last video that I think will go up before the official start of the Christmas season. 
And so I'm already thinking whether or not I should just right now while I have some free time go on and take down the fall stuff. Uh, and so it's kind of sad, but uh, I feel like I'm trying to film ahead. I feel like for the past few months, I've been very good at it. <laughs> I've been really on top of filming ahead and having something to go up in advance, which is not typical for me. I hope I can keep up that momentum. And so if I want to film anything else in the rest of the week, it'll probably go up in December. It's weird to think about. Uh, and so I'm wondering if I should get rid of the fall stuff and go on and start putting up Christmas items. I can't believe it. I can't believe I'm saying that. In many ways, it feels as though the fall season has been very, very long, but in others, I just can't believe Christmas is already here again. That means my birthday's coming. Oh my gosh, I'm not mentally prepared to turn another year older when this year feels like a complete blur to me. I don't really have much memory of this year, though weirdly enough, it feels both at the same time extremely long and extremely short. Anyway, I will check in with you later. Hey y'all, so it is actually Friday evening. Uh, so it is the end of the week and I did not check in any other day, but Monday or Tuesday one, whichever day it was, I'm not sure. But uh, it's been a very hectic week and a very stressful week. Wednesday morning, I spent an hour on the phone with IT an hour. Uh, and then I eventually had to go down to IT to see if they could fix my issue in person. Uh, so that was my Wednesday morning. So Wednesday did not get off to uh, a great start, but let's just say I'm really happy that the week is over. Uh, we're going into the weekend before Thanksgiving. I am standing in the kitchen right now, a big blank wall uh, because that is the big goal for the weekend is to get the kitchen painted. So uh, we have got painting the kitchen up on the agenda for the weekend and also pulling down fall stuff and putting up Christmas stuff. I took down the fall stuff off of my bookshelf. Uh, as I told you, I was contemplating. I went ahead and did it and it was really, uh, it's really sad. I, in many ways, prefer the kind of fall autumn season and autumn decorations. I prefer that to Christmas, I think because I think you get to enjoy them for a much longer period of time. But to really move on into reading updates, uh, I am still currently reading Crime and Punishment. I am 150 pages in and the momentum just keeps building. It's kind of funny that I knew this book was about a murderer and yet when the murder happened, it kind of completely took me off guard. I was completely surprised by it. And now tensions are just really, really high around whether or not people suspect him, whether or not he's going to get caught. Uh, so this is a really, really kind of stressful read. It keeps you on the edge of your seat a little bit. And I don't know why I find it so compelling because I think were this written today, there wouldn't be very much about it that would be remarkable. You know what I'm saying? I think this feels as though it's something that could have been done yesterday, which is maybe why it's so compelling to me in a classic is that this feels so current. I think I mentioned that in my first clip. I'm constantly apparently picking up Dostoevsky after watching something really incredible. Uh, and so I really always have something on my mind when I start reading him. And it's interesting that Nine times out of 10, the issues that he is talking about are issues that are present today. Sorry, I have no clue where I was. I'm serious. The phone does not ever ring unless I am filming. This is no exaggeration. Not sure where I was in talking about this, but just on the whole, want to say that I'm loving it. And I think that the momentum it's keeping is really, really great. I think it's incredibly suspenseful. Well, I think it does read quite a bit like a thriller. And I would say, I'm not even halfway through this, but I would say if you are somebody who has been skeptical about reading classics and you just feel like they're gonna be really dense uh, and you don't really want to do much research into them because you feel like it's probably making a lot of outdated references, Weird thing is, I haven't found that here at all. I will say I do think a lot of classics have that barrier. I think they are harder to read. Uh, I think that they are often talking about things and making reference to things that we don't really make reference to anymore. But Crime and Punishment is not like that at all. It is written very conversationally. It's just so easy to read. And I will say, I think on the whole, 
I think that translated classics are easier to read <laughs> than uh, just English classics because in a weird way, if the translation is more modern, I think it takes away kind of the more complicated language that maybe intimidates a lot of readers. But I found in particular with Dostoevsky that I've just really enjoyed his writing. The themes here, of course, are also really wonderful. I love everything this is doing. Uh, this is just such a fascinating story. Uh, and I think I said a character from Squid Game reminds me of the main character and he does. Uh, but he now has a best friend who reminds me of another character in Squid Game. And so the Squid Game parallel continues. I could make an entire video on this, on Squid Game and Crime and Punishment, because I'm just living for it. Or really just a wider video on how art kind of unintentionally has conversation with other art. So this has just been a really exciting and fun reading experience for me. And I do think it has gotten me out of my slump. Forgive the terrible lighting. We shall end the vlog where we started it. And it is a week to the day since I started the vlog. Uh, so it is the Sunday before Thanksgiving. So the big goal for yesterday was definitely completed. We actually got the entire kitchen painted. I didn't take any footage of it afterwards, though I probably should have. And I really probably should have taken some good beforehand footage. So I did just wanna wrap up the week and talk a little bit more about crime and punishment. I am now about halfway through. To me, it's kind of slowing down a little bit. The middle has been a little bit slower than the rest of the book, I think. And I'm definitely not gonna finish it tonight. Uh, I probably am not gonna finish it in the next week because the week of Thanksgiving is always fairly hectic. But I just wanted to wrap up this vlog with my final thoughts on Squid Game and Crime and Punishment. I'm pretty sure these are not actually gonna be my final thoughts because I haven't finished the book. And when I do finish the book, I am pretty sure that I'm gonna have many, many more thoughts on how this compares <laughs> to Squid Game quite unintentionally. So I'm gonna spoil a bit of Squid Game for you. If you have not watched it, just click out of the video here. It was great having you. I hope you have a great rest of your week and happy reading. If you have watched Squid Game, you can stay. I don't feel as though I'm gonna spoil big elements of Crime and Punishment, except maybe a couple of character dynamics and also thematic choices. Uh, so let's just get right into this. So Squid Game is really interesting in conversation with crime and punishment for a wide variety of reasons, mostly because I think they are both examining themes of poverty and themes of maybe what you are willing to do to get out of poverty uh, and anti-capitalism, things like that, which I think is really fascinating and is always interesting to see done. I think there's a lot of nuance to it in a show like Squid Game. Uh, and I think crime and punishment is maybe a little bit more heavy handed about it because the main character is definitely interrogating that on the page. So Squid Game follows mainly a character named gi who who uh, is really, really down on his luck, of course. And you get the sense in the first episode that gi has put himself in this situation. And you as the viewer, I think initially, don't feel very much sympathy for him as a character. But 
a few episodes in, you learn about his past and that he was involved in a strike and that he's probably suffering from some form of PTSD having to do with that and that that's largely what set him up for so-called failure uh, in the financial realm, really. And by that point, you've come to really feel for Gihun as a character because he's really, really kind to other people uh, and he's really caring towards the other players in the Squid Game. I think Gihun has a counterpart in Crime and Punishment, interestingly enough, and I'm not sure how to pronounce this character's name. I also apologize if I'm mispronouncing Gihun's name because now I realize I think I'm just pronouncing it as I see it written and that might not actually be the correct pronunciation for his name, so I do apologize. But uh, I think he has a counterpart in this book, and it's a character named uh, Razumian, who is Raskalnikov's kind of friend at the university. He's another student, and this dude is just so funny in a way that Gihun was also kind of funny. Even in the midst of like absolute tragedy, you got the sense that Gihun as a character was having fun. We did reach a point in the story where it, it was really terrible and it wasn't fun for him anymore, but he was like a character that really kept a good face on and acted happy when they weren't in the games. Razumian is kind of like that. And he's just somebody who talks a lot. He's a quick talker, he's a fast talker, and Raskalnikov is sitting there like, will you please be quiet so that I can focus on what's going on? But uh, he's so funny. He's always bragging on Raskalnikov, which reminds me so much of Gihun and another character that I've already compared Raskalnikov to, Cho Songwoo. And so Songwoo in the show is like somebody who the entire neighborhood has pinned like their hopes and dreams on because he went to Seoul National University, SNU. And that's like the first thing Gihun will tell anybody is like, oh, by the way, Songwoo went to SNU, can you believe it? And there's a little bit of a shade of that in the relationship between Raskalnikov and Razumian. It's that Razumian and Raskalnikov were both students. Raskalnikov can no longer afford to be a student. And so it's really, it's really interesting their dynamic as characters because that's kind of an undercurrent in their relationship that they don't ever really talk about. And that's also an undercurrent in the relationship between Gyun and Song Wu is that they were kind of friends when they were younger, but now they're living very different lives. And Gyun assumes that like Song Wu is up there and being really successful and he's traveling all over the world and he's doing all this great stuff and come to find out, no, he's not. He's basically uh, taking money from clients and uh, investing it wrongly. And so he's very deeply, deeply in debt. And so I really realize that I am rambling, but it's interesting how thematically the book and the show are dealing with the same things and they're doing it through similar character archetypes. I haven't really narrowed down any other comparisons in terms of characters yet. It's coming though. I get the sense that it's really coming because there's an investigator in this that's really interesting and the investigator on Squid Game was a really fascinating character and he was really smart. And so as this book is still building its momentum and still building towards the climax, I'm really interested to see what happens. But the main point of comparison I wanna make uh, between Squid Game and Crime and Punishment is that in the second episode of Squid Game, everyone chooses to quit the games. If you watch the show, you know this part, uh, they vote to leave. And I think that's really shocking as a viewer because we assume there's gonna be some kind of loophole and that they're not gonna let them leave, but they actually do. And the smart thing is, is they let everybody know exactly what these games are. And then they let them back out into the outside world and almost every single one of them chooses to fight to the death for that money rather than deal with what's going on with them in the outside. And so then throughout the rest of the show, that is something that's in the back of your mind is that these characters chose to be here. They knew what this was uh, and they chose to come back. And I think Crime and Punishment does this also very interestingly because Raskalnikov has planned out this murder. He's planned this out a long time ago. He's basically waiting for a sign. And the second that he gets a sign, he starts going through the motions to do it, but keeps thinking to himself, well, I'm not gonna do that. I would never do that in a million years. I would never do that. Even as he's like picking up the weapon and putting it in his coat to go over there and do the deed. He is in his mind 
thinking it's impossible. I would never do such a thing like that, but he has actively planned it. And there is this underlying thread of kind of anti-capitalism in this book because Raskolnikov believes that if he kills uh, this woman who is kind of a pawnbroker, so you would come to her to get money and you would leave collateral. And she's apparently, you know, a pretty bad woman about that. If you're late by a single day, she's not gonna give you that back. Uh, and so he kind of believes if I take down this woman, I'm taking down like one of the pillars of poverty. If I kill her, then so much good can be done with her money and I'm doing good for everyone. It's not just about me not being able to pay my debts. I am doing this for everyone. Of course, is that really true? Does that really matter? If people need money, they will find somebody else to lend it to them uh, and they will get into the same rut again. And he doesn't actively try to do anything with the money, weirdly enough, or so he hasn't halfway through the book. So I think that's really interesting because in Squid Game, Song Wu, who is just a fascinating character, he goes through such an intense character change. And actually, I'm not gonna call it a change. I think he as a character was waiting for an opportunity like this. Sometimes you see them in media and you're like, circumstances didn't make you like this. You were waiting for an excuse to do something like this. And I think Raskolnikov is the same way. That's why I think they're really interesting. They're very parallel characters. And like reading Raskolnikov, I picture uh, the actor for Song Wu. I think Song Wu's character was interesting because it got to a point that you thought, at what point do you lose your humanity, really? At what point does the money matter more to you than people you know? And for Song Wu, it's early on. He makes that choice very early on. There's gonna be nobody between me and that money. And the show, I think, goes with a really nice and not cynical point of view. And it could have gone very cynical, but I think it went with something very nice uh, by focusing on a character like Yi Hun uh, and showing goodness winning. Gyun won that game without actively having to kill someone, you know. But Song Wu was willing to get his hands bloody from the very start, uh, as soon as he heard the amount of money. And it's interesting too, because he, he is the one that asked for them to vote to go home. Then he sees the amount of money and he's like, no, no I'm voting to stay. So it's just, it's fascinating how both the book and the show analyze the system that these characters live under and that potentially characters like Song Wu and Raskolnikov did this to themselves in a certain way. You know, Song Wu was basically embezzling from his clients. Raskolnikov is just out here doing all sorts of crazy stuff. And you can argue, how did they get there? They got there because of a wider system. They got there because of a larger system at play that they don't really have a choice in. They just have to be an active player in it. And so it's interesting to use children's games to frame that in Squid Game. We are all players in the game of society. Uh, crime and punishment is using it as in, we are all guilty of something. Everyone has committed a crime. Is that crime for good? Is that crime for bad? And is there a place where that crosses over. Can you do a crime for good and bad at the same time? I mean, it's really, it's really, really fascinating. And I think if you like one of these, then you might like the other. If you stayed through this and I've just spoiled <laughs> Squid Game for you a little bit, if you've loved Crime and Punishment, watch Squid Game. And if you've loved Squid Game, read Crime and Punishment. But uh, that is the end of my long ramble and that is the end of this vlog. I would love to know your thoughts on Squid Game or on Crime and Punishment down below, but that's going to be all for me today. I hope you're all having a great week. Happy reading. Goodbye.